Good habits are like the golden key to success. But building them takes self-control, persistence, and discipline. Things that most people, and especially ADDers like me, struggle with. So what do you do? In this video, I am gonna share with you my five favorite strategies to make building good habits insanely easy. Welcome to Hidden ADD, where I share with my community the exact tools, insights, and science-backed strategies that I use to go from 15 years of failure, broke, divorced, and making just above minimum wage, to happily remarried, a successful six-figure Fortune 500 career, and living a life that I love. If you haven't already, smash the subscribe button below, hit the little bell icon so you get updates, and if you get value from this video, please like it. So many authors and experts have said, building habits is the golden key to success. But as we all know, habits can be really hard to build, often requiring motivation, self-control, and discipline. Those are the exact things that people with ADD and undiagnosed ADD struggle with insanely. So we need to adopt modified strategies than what's given out to the mass market of neurotypical brains and use the ones that are best suited to folks with ADD. In this video, I am gonna share with you my five favorite habit hacks that let you build habits powerfully and easily. Now, I've used this routinely in my own life to be able to build a regular exercise habit of four to five days a week, regular meditation habits. I've also used this to quit smoking pot, to quit drinking, and I will tell you that I don't have more willpower and motivation than most people. Just put a bread basket in front of me at a restaurant and it will be gone in about two seconds. And stick around to the end, because I have a free gift for you, a resource that will let you apply a lot of these strategies. It's a very easy to follow free workbook where I break all these down with examples and guide you through them in detail. Strategy number one, we are going to use our laziness to our advantage. In the New York Times bestselling book, Atomic Habits, James Clear says, the greater the friction, the less likely the habit. And so what we're first gonna do is we're going to make the habit or the bad choices that we don't want to do, we're gonna make them harder to do. Let's say that the new habit that you wanted to do was you wanted to eat better. Well, making bad choices hard or what I'm calling using laziness to your advantage would be to take things like junk food or things that you don't wanna be eating and putting them to the back of your pantry. It would be like taking the candy jar off the counter. If you're going out to eat and the waiters come into the table and you know that bread is just always gonna get you, you ask the waiter not to bring bread to the table. There are lots of examples. I'll actually link to a free resource I put together, which is a actionable summary of James Clear's Atomic Habits, and I list a lot of ways and examples of how you can make it harder to do things you don't want to do. So that's strategy number one. So use your laziness to advantage. Strategy number two, of the remaining four strategies, three of these strategies come from the number one New York Times bestselling book, Tiny Habits. It's written by Stanford behavioral scientist BJ Fogg. He's really cracked the code on how to hack behavior. He's taught the founders of Instagram, Airbnb. His stuff really works. I'm gonna give you what you need to know here to apply it. Strategy number two, we wanna make the habit easy to do. So one of the biggest issues that people run into when they start new habits is that they try to make them too big. They try to go from I'm working out zero days a week to I'm gonna work out five days a week. It's just, it's not realistic and you can do it for a week or two and then you lose momentum. Not a reliable strategy for most humans, definitely not for ADD folks. So how do we get around this issue? We start small and then we build up momentum. So in the video that I posted, which I'll link to below, about how to recover from ADD related career and life failures and rebuild your confidence and get your life back, I talk about how you can build your success snowball and it starts small. And I share with you the concept of the magic penny and how 
if you have a penny that doubles every day for 31 days, if you had to choose between that and $3 million today, it's actually a better deal to take the penny. In 31 days, it's worth over $10 million. There's a lot of value in small changes done consistently versus big things that are unsustainable. Strategy number three, also from BJ Fogg at Stanford. What he's found is that the first place to look in any habit behavior that's not happening is actually one of the simplest and easiest but the most often overlooked and that's what he calls prompts a behavior doesn't happen without a prompt so what are prompts two great examples the first would just be simple reminders so set a reminder in your phone every day or use post-it notes this strategy is so important for us 80 years because we're forgetful and we often have working memory deficits. And so this strategy is key. BJ Fogg talks about putting a piece of dental floss already pre-measured and cut on his bathroom counter in the morning so that when he gets to brush his teeth at night, he sees the dental floss there and that's how he built the flossing habit. Another type of prompt, which is different than just having a reminder in your phone, is what's called a contextual prompt. And this is a great prompt to use. So basically what you do is you find an existing habit and then you put this new habit right after it. So let me give you an example. Every morning when I wake up, I go to my Kerry coffee maker and I put in a pod and I start a cup of coffee. That's an existing habit. A habit that I wanted to build was to have more gratitude in my life. So I simply trained myself to use the prompt of making coffee in the morning to as my reminder to then think in my head about three things I'm grateful for. Another example, possibly TMI, but we go to the bathroom, all of us do as humans, a lot. It's a great trigger to build on a new positive habit. For me, I wanted to improve my self-compassion and my self-acceptance and my self-love. I said every time I'm in the bathroom doing my thing, I think of one thing I really like about myself, give myself one compliment. And you know what? It starts to just build a habit and all of a sudden, every time now I'm in the bathroom, it's like, oh, that's what I think of. And it's a very powerful thing. That was probably TMI, huh? You're welcome. So two types of prompts that we covered, contextual prompts where you use an existing habit and you simply link this new habit on the back of it, or just reminders, post-it notes, calendar reminders and so on. Strategy number four is to use a visible tracking tool like this. This is one that I personally have used. I went and bought some very nice stickers, set up a behavior chart effectively of a habit I was trying to build. I reprinted a replica here for you. Why is a visible tracking chart so important for neurotypicals? This is a recommended strategy to have a tracking chart and make your progress visible. But for 80 deers, it's essential because for us 80 deers, out of sight really is out of mind. By putting it in sight, making this chart visible, you're going to remember in some ways this is like using the distractibility that comes with ADD to your advantage. So in the first strategy we used laziness to our advantage. A visible tracking chart uses distractibility to your advantage and acknowledges the fact that for ADD brains what's out of sight is out of mind and so we need to make it in sight. The other great thing about this is as you start to fill this up it starts to show you progress and so a chart becomes motivating in and of itself. It makes the results that you're getting and the progress you're making tangible because what happens in new behaviors is there's a lag period between when you take the new behavior you start eating better, you start working more efficiently. There's a lag between that and when you start to get results in terms of better performance reviews at work or losing weight or getting stronger. And that lag between action and results, <laughs> ADD brains don't work that way. We need to see some connection between what we're doing and getting results. The other nice thing about a visible tracking tool is you can do what I did here, which is add an incentive or a reward for yourself. Something that you don't know what, when I keep going, this is gonna be 
something that I'm gonna do when I fill up this chart or whatever the case is. You're just dangling kind of an exciting carrot out there. When you really don't feel like it, it might just get you over the edge. Okay, strategy number five, and this one is mind blowing. I have a master's degree in organizational coaching psychology. I have been reading personal development and productivity books for 20 years. And this is literally one of the most exciting things that I've ever come across. So how long does it take to build a new habit? You've probably heard 21 days. If you've been paying attention to research over the last few years, you might've heard 66 days. BJ Fogg, the Stanford behavioral scientist that I referred to, the author of the number one New York Times bestselling book, Tiny Habits. He's worked with 40,000 people. He is an expert on behavior change. He taught the founders of Instagram, Airbnb, and other successful companies about how to change behaviors. And I think we can all agree that they've been pretty successful at getting people to change their behaviors. So what's this aspect that I think is just so amazing when it comes to behavior change is that time is not the critical variable in building a new habit. What he found is it's this, how great you feel the moment after you've done the new habit. So if you want to hack, how quickly you can build a new habit, you do the new habit, and then you immediately celebrate. <laughs> well, that sounds absolutely effing ridiculous, and I will give it to you. It's actually really ingenious. So we know is that dopamine is critical in wiring in new habits. And so BJ Fogg's approach basically hacks the system. You force a dopamine release by celebrating. Now, this actually is one of the ways that products create new behaviors in you. One of the reasons that video games and increasingly now platforms like Instagram and others are so good at changing our behavior almost to the point of being extremely addictive is because they use this fog behavior model. Think about when you start a video game, you do one thing and all of a sudden there's gold coins raining from the sky and there's a little ding, ding, ding. You're like, oh, I kinda, kinda did pretty good. If you look at Instagram and the reason that it was so successful, they made the process really easy so you could upload a photo and filter it and get it online in three steps. And when you do it, the app says congratulations. Very quickly, you start getting likes and all of a sudden you're getting all these things. This is what you wanna to do to build powerful habits in your life. You want to be like a video game or like social media app. Every time you do something remotely good, you wanna like yourself. Woo, go Aaron, woohoo! Here's some other tips that I have on my wall to remind me of different ways that I can trigger a dopamine release and celebrate something to lock in and really strengthen new habits. Raise arms overhead and say victory, touchdown. And you don't need to say something out loud. I'm doing that here, but you can also just be like, yeah. I do a lot of like patting myself on the back these days. I feel like this video has got way too much information in it, definitely TMI. If you never wanna see another video from me and you wanna like run as far away as possible, I totally understand. Draw a happy face, lift your chin and smile big. And two more that I really like, uh, imagine hearing a roaring crowd applauding for you when you do something good. Or I sometimes like to imagine that I'm like getting the gold medal at the Olympics like placed on me which also tends to have the roaring crowd as well. Just get in the habit of do something good, celebrate it. You'll start to hack the process of building a new habit. Now I've got a free gift for you. I've created a one hour action guide on the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. Atomic Habits covers a lot of these strategies and the workbook takes you step by step through each one with detailed examples and it gives you a little place where you can fill in details. So you can literally start with a habit you wanna build and work through the workbook. There are a few exercises with a few prompts and you can literally create a habit that follows a lot of these principles and strategies that we've covered here. So you can go get that workbook, leave a comment below, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video.